It is the first day of summer and it is the summer solstice. And where I live, it is about 8.45 p.m. The sun is just going down. I know it's hard to see. There's a deer over there looking at me, <laughs> I think. And I always love recognizing the summer solstice and the longest day of the year. In the winter, the sun looks like this at like 4.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> so it's a real treat. Oh, it is 9 o'clock p.m. or 2100. And you can still see the sunset. And, well, you could see the moon, but the clouds are over it now. So you can't see it. But it's so pretty. I'm so excited for the beginning of summer and hopefully some warmer weather to come as well. Also, I just finished Mad Honey. It was so good. I don't even know if I really talked about this book at all, but I will do a little recap shortly. <music> out for my walk early this morning because I know it's gonna rain later during my lunch break and I can't believe how many snails there are all over the road I can't even look ahead I have to keep looking down so I don't step on them it's crazy I mean we did have a bunch of rain so I'm thinking that's why but they are everywhere it's like a whole trail right here So just checking in with the vlog, um, I finished Mad Honey. I know I didn't really vlog much about this, but I wanted to get on and just chat about it real quick while it's 
kind of fresh in my mind still. So Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult. This is my first book by her, and I know she's very popular. She has a ton of books out there, but I had never picked her up before. Um, this one was really good. I really loved it. Um, I think I probably will give it five stars. I just really, really liked it. So we are following two different characters. We're following Olivia, who is a mom. She's a beekeeper. She um, has a son named Asher who's about 18 years old. He's a senior. And we're following her story and Asher's story. And then we're also following this younger girl named Lily. Lily's also about 18, 19 years old. And um, basically Asher's dating Lily and right in the beginning we find out that Lily dies. She ends up um, being found dead. Asher's the one that finds her. And all of a sudden, he is the main suspect for murder, whether it was accidental or intentional. So we're following this trial of Asher against the state um, and trying to figure out what happened and if he's really guilty. So Olivia comes from a abusive relationship. Her husband was physically abusive towards her. And she ends up leaving him and goes back to her family farm where her parents used to raise bees and sell honey. So after they passed away, she takes over the bee business and she, you know, that sort of like devotes her life to that. We get flashbacks of this abuse throughout the novel, just kind of paralleling what Olivia is going through and how she is still trying to heal from this. Asher is painted as this wonderful kid, very sweet, kind, loving, but he does have these emotional outbursts and some signs of anger within, you know, that keep popping up. So Asher is basically um, convicted of murder. Uh, he goes to prison, no, he goes to jail while he's awaiting trial. And um, yeah, it was just, First of all, the writing was really, really, really good. I really enjoyed her writing a lot. Um, I did listen to this on audio and I thought the auto, audio, they had two different narrators. They had one for Olivia and one for Lily. I did really like Olivia's narrator. Lily's narrator, I didn't, I really didn't like her at first. I'll be honest. I just didn't like her tone of voice. She was very flat when she was reading things. I just... I have heard a few people also say they didn't really like this narrator, but she grew on me towards the end, but really, I just didn't really like the narrator too much. So that kind of brought it down a little bit for me. Um, what's interesting about this book is that it's told in, so Olivia's portions of the chapter are told from the present moment going forward. She does have some flashbacks into her past, but the whole timeline is moving forward up through the trial and beyond. Lily's, since Lily dies in the first chapter, her story and perspective follows a backwards timeline. So we start the day that she was murdered and then we go back like a week before, one month before, two months before. So it goes backwards like this. Within her story, we get snippets of her flashbacks as well. So that was a little confusing, the backward timeline, because certain things would happen and I have to remind myself that it's it was before the thing we just read happened. So that was a little, it was kind of interesting and cool. I liked it, but it was a tiny bit confusing. I actually do want to buy this book so that I can reread it and so I can like just pull more from it because I kept wanting to have a physical copy to like look backwards and see like, wait, what happened when? So interesting but it was a little bit confusing now this book was all was a co-authored book i forgot to mention that jody Picoult and jennifer mm, well you'll see the cover here so you can see who the the author is for that so just really good i mean very nice fleshed out characters i really connected with them the character of lily just i loved her um just felt, I kept having to remind myself that she died because we're going backwards. We're getting all of this life that she's been living. So it was, that was really sad when I thought about it that way, but um, very good. There's a huge twist in the plot that happens around the middle of the book. I loved it, but I did see that a lot of people did not like this twist. So this book is not going to be for everyone, unfortunately, based on um, certain things that you believe or value or, you know, I don't want to say a word because I don't want to spoil that, but 
I know that this was a very polarizing book, but I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. I really enjoyed it. The court scenes. So apparently Olivia's brother is a very high profile successful, successful defense lawyer and he gets, he takes on the case to defend his nephew in this trial. And the court scenes were really well done. I really love a good courtroom thriller. And I, I just thought that the female prosecutor lawyer who was, you know, trying to convince the jury that Asher was guilty. She was really just a strong, really fierce female lawyer. I mean, you wanted to hate her, but she was really good at her job. And I did like the snippets in there where Olivia talked about the bees and beekeeping and how that whole process worked. My one tiny little criticism I guess I have is, and I don't know what the term for this is, but you know how sometimes when you're reading a book and you're in a very intense part of the plot, all of a sudden the main character you're following will have like this weird sort of snippet of information. So for example, we'll get like this really intense scene in the courtroom and you're waiting to hear what happens next, but then it should be like, back when I was raising bees, this happened. And it's like, and then it goes back to the story. And I know that that's a great thing that authors do, but sometimes when it happens so much, it's annoying because you just want to find out what happens with the plot. So that was one thing that I noticed. Um, but overall, it was a super good book. I really enjoyed it. I love the story and I'm glad that I read it. So the other book that I'm in the middle of, I, I know that I was loving and enjoying Primitives, but I had to put that on hold because I had a library book that was due and that is called Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa. So Primitives is on hold. I hope to get back to that very soon, but I'm almost a little over halfway through Wedding, Wedding Crasher. And this actually is really cute. I am really enjoying it. It's a contemporary romance. It's kind of like a romantic comedy type of book. So it's cute, it's funny. I could totally see this working as a movie. There's one scene that of course would have to be watered down, but I really am enjoying it. This is the first book I've read by her. And I think this is the second book in kind of a little series that she has, even though you can read these as standalones um, because they focus on different characters within the series. So that's not a big deal, but we're following Solange, Solange and Dean. And Solange basically crashes Dean's wedding um, by announcing to the whole congregation or the whole um, group that the bride she overheard is in love with someone else. So she crashes that wedding, all this secrets comes out and all of a sudden Dean is single and Solange feels kind of bad, but something like that happened to her mother. So she was very adamant on not making sure that happens to anyone else. So the book is basically a fake dating trope so Dean is a lawyer. He's working on making partner in his firm and they have a new, very um, sought after lawyer that they're hoping to recruit into their business. So Dean is asked to kind of show this woman around town. They live in Washington, DC, kind of show her the sites, explain to her what the firm is about and try to persuade her to join their firm because apparently she is really being sought after by these big law firms and uh, she has to choose one of three that she's going to join. So in order to do that, they really were looking for a couple to take this lawyer Kimberly out and show her a good time because Kimberly has a partner as well. And so he kind of makes up this story that he is dating someone and he asks Solange to help him sort of as a favor to pretend to be his girlfriend so that they can go on these double dates and recruit this person. So it's a fake dating trope really cute um i love the inclusion of solange's brazilian culture um, her family just this warm loving family um, the food that they talk about so that's really cute and i think they have pretty good chemistry the scenes um, it's a very slow burn and they're starting to of course fall for each other and so yeah i'm enjoying that i thought i'm enjoying it more than i thought i would um, but yeah so those are the books just wanted to catch you guys up on those and yeah, that's all I'm reading right at this very moment. I will pick up Primitives when I'm done with Wedding Crashers. And then, oh, I did get an audiobook. Um, this is an oldie, but hopefully it'll be a goodie. It's called Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier, I think. This book's been sitting on my bookshelf forever, and I thought if I got the audio, maybe I would get through it a little bit faster so I can get that out of the way. So yeah just wanted to give you guys an update it's saturday we're not camping this weekend and i'm just gonna get some cleaning done and 
putting away. We had the last day of school this week, so just going, you know, getting the backpacks put away and going through stuff. Hopefully I'll have a lot more time now that we're not gonna be rushing around to a million things. I'm so happy the summer's here. It was a cozy rainy day this morning. The sun's starting to come out a little bit, but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update. And so I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. And if you're not, I've been there, I feel ya. I hope things are going well. And, um, you know, just remember to take time and appreciate all the little things. It really does try to make you feel better. Even if you, you're not in a space like that where you can appreciate stuff, meditate, quiet your mind, and just stop those circling thoughts. I don't know why I'm, I'm going on this tangent, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.